right, hey, I am David for Big Bits, and uh, it's been a little while since we've done a pure coding video, but this is also an update video because we are using some of the new features that have been added to PineScript and TradingView, and we are going to be looking at the array features that they have recently added, which work with strings, and uh, I'll go into that in just a minute. But uh, again, for those of you all who haven't already signed up for a, a premium account or just a paid account on TradingView, uh, if you're interested, please use the referral through my profile. There should be a link in the uh, description of the video that you can go and sign up on TradingView if you're going to do that. I'd appreciate it if you use that link. It gets you, I think, $30 worth of credits towards your paid plan as well. But back to our array example that we have here. You can see, let me zoom in, I have a, a label that's being printed, and we're using some text here, zero index, first index, second and last index, zero index, first index, second last index, and first index again. So this will all make sense as to why this works. We're gonna be playing around with the arrays to actually print this on here. And I'm gonna leave it up to you and your imagination how you can actually use this for something that would work well for you. Now let's go ahead and check out their what's new post here. This came out on December 4th, so it's been a little while since I've been able to get around it. This is about a week or two weeks almost now that uh, this has been out. But I did want to go over this, uh, go over a few of the things here, and then we'll get straight to the actual code itself. Uh, now you can create more types of arrays. So there is a line array and a label array and string arrays. So string arrays are what we're going to be working with. There are label and line arrays now as well, which are gonna work very similar to the other arrays that are in there. You're just gonna be storing these types of objects in there as opposed to uh, just simple values that you're used to. These are custom objects. A string is an object. Uh, an integer is an object as well, technically. And you refer to those typically as data types, whereas the labels and lines, you're probably more, uh, well, it's probably more common to refer to those as objects since that's actually what you're looking at on the chart are these different objects. So I just want to clear that up for those of you who aren't as familiar with programming. And I know I uh, aim this channel towards those types of people. So I just want to make that clear before we go forward. Now, this is an example that we're going to kind of start with. We're going to create an array, a string array. Uh, now, this there are some options in here. You can give initial values in your array and you can set the size of the array. And this is your index size. So um, that is something to keep in mind as well. You can specify the length of the array. Also, they've added several functions for working with arrays. And this is what we're going to be working with. And I think it's really cool feature that you can do with strings. It's going to be really helpful in certain areas when you're creating your own scripts. Now, the first one we have is array.join. Uh, this one is going to take different array parameters and it's going to return a string. So we're going to be working with a string array and we're going to join those together. And then after we join those together, we're going to split them back apart and uh, get some data out of the split array. So it should be pretty fun. And we'll actually show you how to do that within the function itself. And there is another one here, which is array.range. Um, that one we're not going to touch because that one's only for int and float arrays. So we're not working with those data types. We're just going to be doing uh, string arrays. So if you're interested in learning any more about that, I definitely recommend you check out the PineScript reference manual. We're, well, this is something we use a lot on this channel. Go back and forth to the reference manual. You'll see all of the different array functions that you can actually use. There's a lot out there that we haven't even talked about. There's a, a color array, which I believe is very useful. I should probably go back and update some of my old scripts with color arrays uh, where we use different color values. But let's go and focus now on the actual script itself. I'm going to walk you through the code. Uh, we're not going to be writing this live here. We're not going to be live coding, but we are going to walk through step by step what we have here within our code. So the first line here, we create a new string array. It's very simple. I don't specify the length of the array and I don't give it an initial value. So what do I do? Uh, to put the values in there, you use array.push, and I'm going to tell it we are using the array A. We declared our array variable as A. And I'm going to push the value zero index 
into the array and it's going to push it at the last index. Well, this just happens to be the first index, which is index zero. Your arrays are going to be zero index based. So if you want the first item out of your array, you're going to have to call the zero index. And that's why I put the text in here, zero index. So hopefully this is a little bit more clear when we walk through the code. We're going to push the next one. This one will be at the first index and it's probably going to sound confusing. But since it's zero based index, this was actually going to be at the one value in the index. And then we're going to do another one. This will be our last one that we push. And this is going to be pushed at the very end of the array again. And this will be the second index and also our last index here. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to create another array. Well, actually, I'm going to create a string here. Excuse me. J, I'm going to call this J. That is our joined string. And what we're doing is we are calling the array.join function that we talked about. We're using this on the A array where we have all of these values and they, then we are separating them. This is the separating value that we use. We're just going to do space dash space. So it'll give you some room in between them so you can kind of see what you're looking at when we create the label. Now, we're going to dig into this a little bit more, but we're going to start with our label. The first thing we do we want to call the first value in our array. And again, since it's a zero based index, we call the array.get function using our a array. And we tell it we want the very first value, which is at the zero index. So we pass in zero. So that one's going to say zero index. We move to a new line so it's more legible. Then we do the same function. We call the first index and then we call the second index. So that should be all three of our items here zero index, first index, and our second index. And let's see what else we have here. I have also on a new line added our join string, which is going to show you that string that we added together with that separator value. Then probably the most interesting line or call here uh, within this script is this particular line where we actually combine a couple of functions to call a single string. Uh, now what we do here is we first within the get function. So we're going to be creating an array. And we're going to be getting a value out of that. Now to create the array, we are going to be calling string dot split. So we are going to be splitting a string up based on a separator value. So we know that we joined our array originally into the string J with the separator here. We're just going to use the same separator. And I just checked to make sure that my head's not in the way. Thank goodness uh, you can actually see this and I haven't been talking with my head in the way. But anyway, we've got our separator here. And what we're going to do is we are going to split that string up. So now within the get function, we have an array uh, that's just temporary. And it is the split array from our joint uh, string from the original array. So this is an entirely different array that's being created in memory here. And what we're going to do is call array.get. With that brand new array created on the fly here, we're going to get the first index, which is going to be the middle value since we have three values. And it should read first index on our very last line out of this. And lo and behold, we add this to the chart, and that's what you get. We iterated through all of our array values within that uh, string array. We had a zero index, first index, and our second and last index. Then we added the new line where we showed our joined string with the custom separator value, that space dash space. You can see it displays it in order because it was joined. Now, lastly, we created that array on the fly, and then we called to the array get to get a value out of there, the first index, which was the middle value out of the three. So it's important to know when you do the uh, joins that it will keep them in order. And then when you do the splits, it'll also keep them in order if you do that one by one. Now, there are cases where you might want to change their orders. Like I said, there's tons of ways you can use arrays and how you use them is up to you. But just kind of pointing these things out to you so that you can actually use them going forward in the future. Now, that is it for what we've done with the code here. There's a ton of stuff you can do. Hopefully, we're going to be making some more videos here soon on some of the other updates and some of the other features, and hopefully maybe we can get back into some other things. My schedule's kind of cleared up just a little bit, so hopefully we can get back to doing a little bit more videos. Now, uh, of course, I did mention the PineScript reference manual, and then also go play around with some of the other arrays. 
uh, there's a lot of fun things you can do with arrays, especially when you start working with multiple arrays. And yeah, there's just a lot to it there. And you're going to have to keep some of the concepts that we've worked on in the channel before in mind when you're working with some of these values, just to make sure that uh, everything works the way it should. Now, that is it for this particular video. If you did like the video, please leave a like on the video. That helps a whole lot. But if you like the video and you're down there, please go ahead and subscribe while you're down there. That way you'll be updated on some of these other TradingView updates. And you get some code updates as well on other things that you can work on. And I should have some more videos coming out pretty soon. There's several updates from TradingView recently, and hopefully we'll get to all of those here. But that's going to be it for now. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.